All right, so this course involves a lot of category theory, and I want to um, motivate uh, the definition of functor. Um, and let's do that. So, so uh, what I'm about to say is going to f feed later into a theorem called the Brouwer fixed point theorem. And the Brouwer fixed point theorem says that for any continuous map uh, from the, the, the n ball to itself, uh, it's going to have some fixed point. Um, and another thing that you can drive from this, for example, is that anywhere on the Earth at any point in time, there's going to exist uh, two antipodal points, which are going to have the same temperature and pressure. Okay, so this is, you can derive really cool things from uh, the Brouwer fixed point theorem. Um, that I'm going to do in another video, but first let me uh, tell you what I want to do. Okay, so, so, so here I want to prove that there's no, so, so the goal here is that there's no continuous map, right? There's no continuous map uh, from uh, D2 to S1. So here's, uh, that, that fixes the boundary. Okay, so there's no retract from, uh, so, so in particular, I, I'm looking for, for that there's no retract. So here I, I can't, so here's the disk, here's D2. And then the boundary here, D of D2, this is S1. So this is the, the one sphere or the, the circle, okay? And so I want to find some map here, right? Does there exist a map that can, that can just take this thing here uh, to its boundary in a continuous way, right? And um, so the, the answer to this is no. Um, and, and, and what we're proving is that there's no retract, okay? So let me give, uh, uh, so like the idea is like if, you, if you're gonna do this, it'll have to break and you'll have to like rip the, the disk in some way. Okay, so let me give you the official definition of a retract. Okay, so uh, we're going to let A and X be a topological space, right? So fix A, a subset of X, a subspace of a topological space. Okay, so a retract uh, of X uh, to A is a continuous map Uh, here, R from X to A, such that uh, R restricted to A is the identity on A. Okay, so this is what a retract is. Okay, and um, so one thing that you can do, so like what's an example of a, of a retract? Okay, so like if here's a cylinder, right? I can just crush everything down. So the cylinder is X. So this whole thing is X. And then A is this boundary part here, right? So this is A. So the cylinder is just the outside part, right? Um, so this is, uh, let's say, S1 cross I, right? And A is just equal to, well, S1 cross, and let's say it goes from 0 to 1, right, and then it's cross 0. And so there, 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 this is an example of where you, you would have a retract. So there's a continuous map where you just send it to uh, the, the first component. So this is, this is an example of, a, this, this is a retract. This one, is n this one can't happen. Okay? So, um, so the theorem we want to prove is that, is that there is no retract from D2 onto S1. Okay? And so how are we going to do this? So I'm going to kind of give you the idea. So the proof idea
OK, so here's the proof idea, right? Is, so we need a way of like deriving a contradiction or, or detecting that something's false or use some invariance of our topological space that, that, that is going to mess things up. OK, so what we'll have is, is so we have S1, OK, and this includes into D2. So this is an injective map. It's a continuous map. It's just the inclusion map. So this is the inclusion. And if we had a retract, so if yes, if we had a retract, then we would have this thing here. And this composition here would be the identity on S1. OK, so this is the, this is the map which just sends uh, x to x. OK? And so the strategy is to apply a functor to this map. OK, so we want to apply a functor. OK, so what we'll do is, so this thing here is maps of topological spaces. So they're continuous maps of topological spaces. And so what we'll do is we'll apply this functor. So what, what, what's called a functor here. OK, so we apply a functor. OK, and, and what happens is just that everyone gets a pi 1. So we get pi 1 of S1. We get a pi 1 of D2 of the disk, and we get a pi 1 of s1 here. And this is r. And this is, this is the, this is a, OK, so this is pi 1 of the inclusion. OK, so uh, this is pi 1 of r. And then this is pi 1 of the identity of s1. OK, and then pi 1 of the identity is the identity. OK, but what, what happens is that this thing here, this, these are all group homomorphisms. So these are all groups and group homomorphisms. OK? So and these are topological spaces in continuous maps. And um, OK, and, and then there's some facts about this thing, this, this particular functor that we'll want to use. OK, so, so some facts that we use. So this, this functor here, pi 1, is, is what's going to be the fundamental group, OK? And, um, and, and so the, the facts that we'll want is that pi 1, OK, of the, this circle here, this is isomorphic to, well, it's an infinite cyclic group, OK? Pi 1 of d2, so this is equal to 0, right? So, or, or 1, depending on whether you want to write this additively or multiplicatively, right? And uh, pi 1 of the identity of S1 is the identity of pi 1 of S1. OK, so like if you take the identity map in this category of topological spaces, then it becomes the, the, the thing here. And I guess the other thing that we're using is that, you know, pi 1 of, you know, we're using something like pi 1 of f composed with g is pi 1 of f composed with pi 1 of g. So for, for uh, group homomorphisms, so it's like it, it, it's a homo it, it breaks up continuous maps into composition of group homomorphisms. OK? And so, uh, so what happens when this happens? OK? So this becomes the identity here, right? And then this, so let's, let's kind of just write out um, what, what happens here. So I'm just going to rewrite this diagram here. So this is the integers, OK? And then the integers need to go via some group homomorphism to the 0 group. And then this goes to the integers again. And then we have that this map here is the identity on the integers, OK? So this is the identity. And we first need to crush it down to the 0 group and then go back. So if, if this were possible, right, then there would be a way to crush 0 down to the integers and then undo that process. And this, this gives a contradiction here. So because we can gather these facts together, right, so that we have that this functor here breaks up the homomorphisms, or breaks up the, the, the continuous maps, 
right, into maps of groups, and because this thing becomes the identity, and we know this thing is trivial, right, well, we, we get a contradiction because of what happens with the groups. Okay? So, um, all right. So this is kind of our first motivation for, for talking about um, functors.